is Brazil. Pô, não tem jeito. Já... Cinco segundos de vídeo já percebe que o nível de produção do cara é um absurdo, né? Bizarro. I've heard it's home to one of the most unique and surprising car cultures in the world. I've never even heard of half the cars here, and the way they're building and modifying these cars is completely unique to Brazil. Eu não, eu não assisto porra nenhuma de, de carro, né? Mas eu sei que a cena dos carros do Brasil é muito pica. Tem uns caras muito pica mesmo. Crazy. But why? Why is it so different? Well, I'm here in Sao Paulo to figure that out. Sao Paulo. the locals. I'm gonna check out the car scene. And hopefully, if I'm lucky, I'll get my hands on the wheel of one of these crazy Brazilian rides. Police is coming, so we have to... Deu merda. Deu merda, deu merda. Sao Paulo. A city with a population of over 12 million. That's more than New York and Los Angeles combined. I'll be spending the next few days here. The first thing I need to do is go find one of those 12 million. My good friend G, who's worked for Donut for years now. Let's go find him. O grande G, o famoso G. Lopes. G will be our guide for the next few days. He showed us around the city and we got acquainted. Caralho, deixa eu ver o que, é que eles comeram, né? G will be our guide. O editor do canal dele é brasileiro, é isso? Guide for the next few days. Entendi errado. Days. He showed us around. Ou ele é um editor aleatório. Caralho, ele pegou um pouco de tudo, hein? The city, and we got acquainted with some of the locals. Ele é só editor. Local. Ah, ele é um dos editores. Oh, me. Ah, let's get it. But I didn't come all the way to Sao Paulo to do 360 flips. I came here for some cars. G has arranged for us to check out a local tuning shop on the other side of the city. One of the first things you'll notice here is the insane amount of Volkswagens. It's a Saveiro. Saveiro, it's yeah, okay, a I've utility version of a Gol. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that buzz. Yeah, there's a lot of man. Do you know how like how late they made? O Belk é muito diferente, meu irmão. Porra, caralho. That kind of thing? Oh, it's like five years back or something. Really? I mean, not five, but like yeah. it's recent. Recently, yeah. yeah. Volkswagen of Brazil operates independently from Germany, and most of the models are completely unique to the Brazilian market. It's actually Brazil's biggest car company, and the most popular model is this. Brazilian market. It's actually Brazil's biggest car. Justo, né? O Gol é. Car company. O Gol é muito forte, né, velho? And the most popular model is this: the Gol. O nome é, é genial. O bagulho é genial, pô. No, not the Golf. The Gol. It's just like a Golf, but a little smaller, a little less fancy, and a little cheaper. Not only is the Gol Brazil's most popular car, it's also their most popular tuner car. The shop we're going to is called Arved's Garage, and they specialize in V-dubs like these. All right, we're here at Arved's Garage. Arved, How thanks for having us. Thank you. We're going to check out some of the Volkswagens he's working on down here in Brazil. Awesome. Well, that's a good-looking build. Yeah. Nice cars. This is a Polo GTI. Do you not have Polos in the U.S.? Um Polão é... É querido pelos caras, não é? Yeah. Yeah. Small car, but it's very fun to drive. Ooh, uh, yeah, VR6. VR6. Wow, so you guys do basically everything here. Yes. I miss doing body work. I don't uh, do it anymore. If you want, <laughs> I'm a lot of free work. Clearly, these dudes love Volkswagens, but they don't always get the parts we do when it comes to modifying them. So sometimes they have to get a little crafty. So they don't have uh, easy access to slotted brake rotors, so they slot them themselves on their little uh, mill here, which is pretty cool. Pô, tem, pode falar, mas tem que amar demais, mano. Óbvio que é o trabalho dos caras também, né? Cara, tipo, mas caralho, mano. That's a good way to do it. The reason they even have to do this stuff is because foreign products are heavily taxed. And that's why you really don't see that many imported cars. Brazil is a proudly independent country and over the years has levied taxes and embargoes to support Brazilian automotive industry and reduce dependence on foreign Só por isso vai tomar 30% do Lula nesse vídeo aí. Markets. If you want to import vai a fudido, vai criticar, vai tomar. Car like a 350Z or an E36. Ela botou Jesus Cristo com a uma capa de Batman, pô. É mole, uma porra dessa. You can expect to pay nearly double once you factor in all the taxes. And then oh, getting parts oh. for those cars can be a nightmare. Jesus Cristo herói. That doesn't stop determined enthusiasts from importing them, but for the majority of car people, options are limited, so they just work with what they got. So, it... a famosa gambiarra, né? A famosa gambiarra. Might seem like it's kind of the only type of car here in Brazil, but that's not really the case. I think we're going to go find our se o vídeo tem legenda em inglês, você pode traduzir automaticamente pro... Pô, então eu sou burro aqui, eu... 
Ah, tem aqui o traduzir automaticamente, né? Mas, pô, eu te falo, ah, Pô, não. Pô, fui muito burro, né? Essa opção tinha aparecido antes, eu não cliquei. As the night falls, we head to one of the local gas stations. G tells me this is where the local car scene gets together every Thursday night, which is the unofficial car night in Sao Paulo. And tonight is Wednesday. Bruh. É amanhã então, hein? Amanhã tem, porra! But we called a few friends and invited them out anyway. Pô, quando tava sem a legenda em português, eu não tava lendo a legenda, né? Eu tava tentando entender no inglês direto. Agora que tem a legenda em português, eu tô olhando pra ler. Vai tomar no cu a cabeça é uma merda, né? Is this normal here? Yeah, As you may notice, there are cars like 350Zs and E36s that we all know and love, but I also want to see stuff like this. And this is what you see most of the time. When you're out on the street... Porra, isso é pica! These are all over the roads. Take a peek down there. That's a pretty fat turbo. 330 to the wheels. I'm assuming this is running on ethanol? Yeah. All right, so that big turbo explains why this thing is sitting the way it is. So this is a front-wheel drive car. They rake these out to get a little bit more weight on the front so that they have more traction. And I've heard this is just the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. I hear there are people making six, 700 horsepower. And part of that is because of the ethanol, but part of that is because these people are crazy. And then, this guy showed up. This right here is a Chevy Opala, a car that was made and sold here in Brazil for decades. Just like Volkswagen, there's also a GM of Brazil that makes completely different cars from what we get in the States. What makes the Opala so special is that it's rear-wheel drive. There are barely any rear-wheel drive cars made in Brazil, so enthusiasts absolutely love them. And the owner of this one just asked Max and I if we wanted to hop in the car for a ride, so of course, we said yes. Based on all the people whipping out their phones, I'm starting to think maybe I should have said no. I see there's no seatbelts back here. Or up here. E as pessoas só seguindo a vida normalmente ali, um ropalão queimando pneu. Okay, so we didn't know he was gonna do that. If I knew the car didn't have seatbelts and the dude was about to go full Vin Diesel on us, yeah, maybe I would have thought again. But we are already in the car, so there's no going back now. So that was interesting, but there's something else interesting about these gas station car meets. The gas. Look at that. Ethanol. Or more specifically, the ethanol. Remember how Brazil wants to re reduce reliance on foreign markets? Well, a huge part of that is offering Brazilian-made sugarcane ethanol at the fuel pumps. And this has been the case here since the gas crisis in the 70s. This sugar fuel makes up about 40% of the country's transportation fuel, and nearly all new cars are able to run it, and most old cars, like the ones we've seen here tonight, have been modified to accept it. And the thing with ethanol is, you can make a lot more horsepower than with gas. And that's part of the reason these guys are able to squeeze so much power out of these tiny little engines. So how much power can you actually squeeze out of these little engines? Anote. Engines. Well, our next... Boa edição. Aprende aí, Rani. Tá vendo? Não é só ficar dando cortezinho seco, não, irmão. Muito mais além. Stop is a shop that's building four cylinders with more power than just about anything at this gas station meet. And they focus on a specific four cylinder, the most popular one in Brazil, the Volkswagen AP engine. 
We're here at Made for Street Motorsports, and the owner, Robinho, has some pretty interesting, interesting AP-powered cars to show us. This thing is so clean, it looks, it looks like it's fresh off the showroom floor. This is a Volkswagen Savero, a little stubby pickup truck version of the Gaul. Can you imagine having one of these in the States? It would be so cool. All right. In this engine, they're using motorcycle pistons. Oh, and the ITB setup, is that? Pô, é muito doido, é uma gambiarrazinha, é, porra, bagulho genial, doideira, né, mano? Those are made in Brazil for this type of yeah, setup. Yeah, as a modification? Yes. Fires right up. Okay. Oh, yeah. Não é gambiarra? Porque, não é porque é bem feito que não é gambiarra. É pra estar ali? O bagulho é... é, é, é... É do carro, uma gambiarra foda, uma gambiarra foda, uma gambiarra. Gambiarra não é um bagulho que é um lixo, não, pô. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> that's cool, that's a big turbo for this little thing. So everything here is Ford. É porque você quer que eu chame uma modificação? É isso? Um mod? Você quer que eu fale que é um mod? In yeah. Brazil, yeah. Yeah. the whole block, everything's for a thousand. Go for a thousand. Gambiarra é muito, né? Ah, entendi. É um tuning. Tá bom, valeu. Tem um gringo da Alemanha, tá ligado? Pra valorizar o... Carro brasileiro e falar gambiarra, tu fica. Ai, gambiarra não. É mod. It's the only car that doesn't run. Então é mod. Because of it's the ownership. Yeah, car, so yeah, yeah, that's how it always is. I understand. Shall we move on to this? Yeah, this thing is awesome. Porra, tu fica, tu fica nervoso ouvindo. Depois o cara te ameaça, tu fica. Tu acha ruim? Não, eu quero que o cara se conscientize, porra. Alright, just keeps getting crazier and crazier. So it's clear that they're making big power with these little four cylinders. But how are they doing it? Well, with all this stuff, the AP engine has a huge amount of aftermarket support. Unsurprisingly, all this stuff is made right here in Brazil. From the pistons, to the rods, to the valves, to the entire head, and everything in between, Brazilian companies have done everything they can to squeeze the most juice out of these APs. Caralho, é muito, é muito doido, né, mano? Puta que pariu. These are awesome. And that's why the AP is the go-to choice to swap into just about any car. Not just Os caras tem que ser muito gênio, né, mano? Caralho. Volkswagens. It's kind of like the LS swap of Brazil. Só avião, filho. All right, well, this thing sounds awesome. We made, I think it was about 400. O grupo é só avião decolando, pô. Caralho. 50 wheel horsepower on low boost, which is 36 psi. High boost is 50 psi, and supposedly makes some ballpark is six, 650. Ele tá feliz pra caralho, babo é. Crazy. And you want to know something? I want to see some of these insane AP engines in action. I must drive one. And to do that, G has one more thing up his sleeve to cap off our tour of Brazil. We've been having an absolute blast in Brazil so far, but we got one thing left to do, and that's have a big drift party with everybody we've met along the way. So we rented out the local track, and we invited everybody we've met along the way and all their friends with all their crazy cars. So it's time to see some of these wild Brazilian builds in action. And I hear I might get to experience the AP engine for myself. I'm excited. Pô, que ma Pô, maneiro, man. Can you tell? We've seen Volkswagen Golfs, we've seen Chevy Opalas, but this is the first time I've seen this. It's a Chevy Chevette, and it's one of the most popular drift cars in Brazil. We did get the Chevette in the States for a few years, and they didn't really catch on. But in Brazil, they were produced for decades. And like I mentioned earlier, Brazilian-made oh, yeah. rear-wheel drive cars are pretty hard to come by. So for a lot of drift enthusiasts, this is their AE86. This one was Pô, built tá as mal. a tribute Tem que ser muito... shit. to Takumi's 8.6 from Initial D. You probably won't be surprised to find out that it's powered by an AP engine, so he can make good, cheap, ethanol-fueled power. And it's what they didn't make oh, yeah. rear-wheel drive cars are pretty hard to come by. So for a lot of drift enthusiasts, this is their AE. 
ficou muito brabo. 86. This one was built as a tribute to Takumi's 86 from Initial D. You probably won't be surprised to find out. Tem que ser muito boa. Vou te falar, mano. Tu tem que ser muito fodalhão. That is powered by an AP engine. Tem que ser muito fodão. Good, cheap, ethanol fueled power. And guess what? He just said I can drive it myself. I'm finally gonna get to see what it's like to drive a Brazilian drift car. Ele tá numa alegria fodida ele. All right, before I hop in the driver's seat of an AP engine powered car, I just wanted to say this. There are obviously a lot of reasons for Brazil's super unique car culture, but at the end of the day, they're just doing what they can with what they have, which is true pretty much anywhere in the world. We had a blast making this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it nearly as much as we enjoyed making it. And if you did, let me know where you want to see us go next in the comments, because we want to go. Now it's time to go get behind the wheel of a Brazilian AE86, which the owner told me is the hardest to drift car in the world. And I want to send a special thank you to all our friends that made this trip possible. From G to Arved and Luis, a made for street performance shop, Jamie Orr Muito helped bravo, us plan mano. the thing out, and all the people of Brazil for welcoming us to your country. Now there's only one way to end a sick drift meet, and that's a 900 horsepower super burnout. Hit it! <laughs> Pô, muito foda o vídeo, mano. Produção pica. O canal do cara é imenso, né? Eu, porra, é doideira, né? Pô, o canal do cara é muito imenso. Caralho, é foda. Esse... É nicho, né? Nicho, assim como o futebol é nicho, mas enfim, eu não conheço. Caralho, doideira. Teria coragem de queimar a roda igual esses caras fazem? Não teria, mano. Tem muita coragem, mano. Ainda tem vontade de ter um áudio? Pô, mano, eu tenho vontade de ter, mano. Só que é muito caro, né, mano? É muito caro, pô. Tipo, eu. Eu queria um, o RS Q8, né? Quer dizer, eu queria o Q7. Só que aí eu vi que lançou um Q8. E eu vi que tem um RS Q8. Só que ele é 1 milhão e 300 mil reais, pô. E aí? Tá ligado? Aí não tem jeito. Tu não falou que não curtia dirigir? Eu não curto dirigir, pô. Mas eu curto só num carro foda. Deve ser maneiro. Tá ligado? Deve ser maneiro pra caralho, pô. Foi Beatriz dando drift? Não, não, não é um carro de drift, não, pô. É um carro maiorzão, pô. Mas, assim, eu gosto... É, porra, acho que por eu ser gordão, tá ligado? Grandão, assim, eu sou alto e gordo, né? Pô, eu não consigo me ver num carro menor, assim, não, tá ligado? Sei lá, me dá uma agonia do caralho. Pega uma Hilux. Pô, já aluguei uma Hilux pra testar se eu comprava ou não. Achei uma merda. É que eu achei muito ruim, tá ligado? É porque eu... Pô, mas é que ela é muito bruta, tá ligado, mano? Ela é, tipo assim, ela, é um, ela, é, ela não é muito confortável, tá ligado? Ela também não é muito tecnológica, sei lá, eu posso estar tá errado, tá ligado? Enfim, não me... sei lá, não me pegou. 